Hey everyone, Eugene here, back again. This time I have turned off the Tourette's, so if you're here for that, you gotta go away and come back in a couple weeks and we might have something for you. But for today, we're just going to talk about perfume and Ensemble Mythique, specifically from the new uh, Absolutes de Orient collection. And uh, we know this has been repackaged and rebranded from the old Desserts de Orient. So um, let me spray some on before we get going here. Oh. Man, this is really good. So I have reviewed this with Crystal and I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not going to get into the whole review aspect. I just kind of want to touch on the repackaging and the rebranding. Um, it's so good though. We, we are going to have to uh, um, uh, remind ourselves what this does smell like. So right off the bat, it's totally unlike anything that Wasser has created before. If you're familiar with Guerlain and Terry Wasser's work, um, if you're looking for something avant-garde and you're just kind of wearing Byredo and John Verbatos and you're looking for something special, you'll know that this is not uh, typical of Wasser's work. Wasser um, has a couple of signatures. One is um, tobacco, uh, tonka bean, kind of that thing that he's got going on in um, the Montguerlain, Santal Royale, uh, Lomé Dial, and then he's got another signature that he uses in a lot of his women's exclusives like Mademoiselle Guerlain, um, Le Plus Beau Jour de Ma Vie, and there's the other wedding day scent. It's something muddy, so it's a lot of resins, incenses, um, musks, and fruity notes. And like I said, this is like completely different. It's totally abstract. A lot of the notes in the pyramid um, doesn't really even jive with me. I get, uh, I definitely get that ambergris. This is all about ambergris. Roses listed as well as frankincense. And the rose to me is very abstract. It's definitely not a rose that you're going to smell like a picture perfect rose, the rose that you see out in your garden. Um, there's days where I think I get rose. There's days where I don't feel the rose. But to me, this is mainly a soapy, salty, buttery, aldehydic, creamy um, ambergris. Uh, it's got a little bit of marine-like qualities to it, just kind of reminding us um, where ambergris came from. You know, it's something that uh, was spit out by a whale, and it's been floating and bobbing up and down in the sea or the ocean for what could be decades, who knows. So it does have that soapy, salty, um, aldehydic ambergris which does get a little bit uh, animalic. So if you're not, if you're coming from just mainstream, um, a very entry level designer fragrances, I'm not sure this is something that is going to appease to you because it can get a bit dirty. Um, it might even be a little challenging for some. I don't really find it that way. The dirtier her fragrances, the more I seem to appreciate it. Um, yeah, I always look forward to a somewhat nasty perfume. Although I wouldn't call this nasty at all. So the big question is, uh, and I've been hearing and, and seeing a lot of this, because it's been repackaged, you know, um, the, the dreaded reformulation word. Has it been reformulated? Well, let's get into this because I've got, this is the original, or some people like to call it vintage bottle this is the uh, removable top, and it was repackaged once after that to a, a fixed atomizer. And again, this is the third repackaging. So if I'm looking at the contents of ingredients on here, I do see a, a, a small change, and that's about when, when you go down eight places, it states limonene um, on this box, and limonene doesn't show up on this box till way down the list. So I see some things have changed. Uh, they've changed places. So it almost tells me there has been a minor reformulation. A major reformulation. I don't care what you want to call it. What is important is the smell. And I've heard people, uh, friends of mine, people who I admire their taste, who I think have fantastic taste, that this perfume has been butchered. 
Um, my thoughts, my feelings, what do I think? I've, I've worn a lot of this as I have been living for the entire Absolutes to Orient collection this winter. I have been wearing these nonstop. I've got, I think there's one or two more I have downstairs. And um, I have been wearing Ensemble Mythique, which is no longer called the Orient. And um, I have to say to me, they are as identical as can possibly be. I don't notice a difference in smell. I don't notice a difference in performance or any other thing for that matter. Um, I don't know what to say. Like to me, they are the exact same. And I've truly never had an issue with a majority of the things that are supposedly reformulated by Guerlain. Either be L'Enstant Extreme or the Lidge, the acronym. Um, to me, even that, like the original black rim bottle to the current Listerine bottle, they smell... <laughs> I was going to say, they smell like as identical as can possibly be. Has it been changed? Who knows? Um, I remember speaking with Selvain Delacorte, the uh, director for Guerlain at the time before she went on to launch her own brand. And she like confirmed, I know they're always going to confirm that nothing's ever been reformulated, but she was, you know, dead set against admitting to um, it being reformulated while at the same time telling me other things like that are going to be discontinued and things that she really shouldn't have been saying. So I have really no reason not to believe her. Um, so to me, there might be a little bit of reformulation taking place in, in the ingredients, but the smell is identical. Um, one thing I don't usually talk about in my videos is price, and that's just really subjective. Either you want to pay for it or you don't, and I don't really bring up price in my videos, but I think I really need to stress it here because uh, as they did change the formula and, and the packaging, we got a major break because this is a 75 mil bottle that was going, and I'm guessing here, the the last time I saw it was about $300 Canadian. And uh, now you're getting 125 mil content for $221 Canadian, which is a huge break coming from Guerlain, a well-established niche or designer house, whatever you want to uh, classify it as. And uh, I'm really grateful for that, you know. It's not very often that we'll get a break from any perfume company, uh, especially Guerlain, which likes to uh, hike their prices quite often. Um, to me, this is a very different perfume than the rest of the collection. Um, you know, a lot of these are very woody and dry, and they've got a lot of those chemically uh, aroma, synthetic things going on. And um, this really stands out to me. I mean, not that I don't like these, I, I'm truly in love with them, but this is just, you know, completely different on a, a whole other level. Um, it's just, I don't know, I, I'm just like completely nuts over it. And it's almost like, just the way it performs on me, it's not like a traditional perfume. It's not, you know, like a top, mid, and base notes. It's almost like the way it unfolds is special in itself. So. I think Terry really has crafted something special here for you. And I have to tell you, this is like absolutely 100% uh, Eugenius approved. <laughs> so, I mean, if you have find yourself in the same taste as me, I would say go ahead and give this a try. And uh, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, other than that, I just kind of wanted to introduce that or, or this new packaging as I've done the same for formerly known as Songe de Bois de Thé. This is Bois Mysterio. Um, Queer Entente is due out next month and I haven't been as excited for a perfume launch as this one in a long, 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 long time. I think, you know, if there's gonna be one more perfume that I'll be purchasing this year, which is not the case, it will be Queer Entente. And um, I'll, I'll be sure to share that with you guys. As well, Ombre Eternal, you guys all know this has been discontinued and, you know, bottles are drying up and I'm kind of torn between should I get one or not? And I know I really don't need it because I'm never, ever, ever going to get through this one, but I just adore it to pieces and I um, hate to be without it, but 
that's that. I think it's just me being more greedy and a selfish perfume lover than actually um, needing needing it. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to say. If you guys have uh, tried Encense Mythique or if you have any questions, be sure to uh, leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you. I'm sure some of my viewers will get back to you. They're always uh, taking part in the discussion. So, yeah, anyway, we'll see a shout out to the WAC Pack and... Uh, Love to see that you guys are staying away from the top 20 trending. Meh, sense. All right, we'll see you soon.